If you do a good job of saving all of the colors that you use to the swatches panel, you can use it to your advantage as you're designing or to increase your design efficiency. Colors linked to save swatches can be modified directly from the swatches panel. This is a key benefit of using swatches. For example, if a 48 page booklet is designed using blue and green over and over and over throughout the design and your client decides she now wants to use orange and green instead of blue and green, you can modify the blue swatch easily to change it to be orange instead of blue. And so I have a small example here on this slide where I've designed this sneaker repeating pattern. Um, side note, I didn't design a sneaker, it's um, free vector art from frenchpaper.com and it's just to illustrate the example. And I've created this pattern and my client's super happy with it and then all of a sudden they come back and they do not like the finished product. They think the blue is just washing out too much. And you can see I've actually used two colors of blue. There's a light blue and a medium blue. By saving those colors to the swatches panel and making sure that all the instances of those colors are linked to the swatches panel, I can easily go onto the swatches panel and change the medium blue to be a light orange and the light blue to be a dark orange color. And then it updates everywhere in the entire design. The steps that you would need to follow to modify a color swatch are to double click the small square swatch icon to the left of any existing swatch. It will launch the swatch options dialog box and then you can modify it according to your needs. So you can change it to a different um, color. It doesn't have to be spot. It can be spot or process. If you're choosing a Pantone color, you can choose a different version of that color. You can say, I want Pantone 185 instead of Pantone 397. Um, if you're using the CMYK sliders, you can just slide the colors around until you choose the new color of your liking. It is both good and bad, however, because it will change every instance in your entire project. If I only wanted to change every other sneaker to have different colors, then I would have to do that manually because changing the swatch changes every instance of where that swatch has been applied. So I have a tip for you when you're modifying swatches. Sometimes it may be easier to create a new swatch using the color picker instead of modifying the existing swatch if you had to use the sliders, the CMYK sliders I told you earlier. I don't really enjoy them so much. If this is the case, create your new orange swatch for the example on the previous slide and then delete the original blue swatch. InDesign will not allow you to delete a swatch that you're currently using unless you say, hey, I know that I'm using yellow orange or I know that I'm using that blue swatch, uh, I want you to replace all instances of blue with the new yellow orange swatch or vice versa. And so if you're using it anywhere in your design, you try to delete it, InDesign says you can't because you're using it somewhere, so you have to replace it with something. And so you can replace it with the new color. That's just a little tip. I, find, I personally find it easier that way. You can also save and load swatches if you need to share them with someone else. Another benefit of using color swatches is the ability to share swatches. Swatches can be saved and loaded in InDesign via the Options File menu on the Swatches panel using the .ase file extension. It stands for Adobe Swatch Exchange. It also works in Adobe Illustrator. They can also be shared with other graphic arts programs that support that type of file. An example is Adobe Illustrator. This allows designers to ensure the exact colors designated for a project are the same exact colors used for all aspects of the project. If you're the, the main person making the decisions about colors for a project and people are working on peripherals for the project, you can send them the exact colors that you want. You can ensure that they're spot colors or process colors and that they're exactly the colors that you've chosen. Then, once you have saved your .ase file, the people who receive that can load it into their system. In InDesign, the way that you're going to save and load swatches is via the option file menu, which is the little square with four horizontal lines in the top right hand corner of any panel, but in this case it'll be on the swatches panel. And if you highlight swatches, so you can see that blue all the way through green are highlighted or selected on the swatches panel, and then select save, it'll allow you to save it as a .ase file. If you go to another InDesign document or Illustrator document and you hit the Options File Out menu and choose Load Swatches, a open dialog box will appear. You can find any .ase file on your computer or system and then you can load them and they will be added. I have a little note here for you. Uh, the first is that tint and gradient swatches are not included when you save swatches. Whether or not you have them selected, my example doesn't have any, but it will not bring tints or gradients along with the files. And two, only the selected swatches will be included when you save 
the, the swatches. And so if you don't have any swatches selected, save swatches will be grayed out. Or if you only have the blue swatch selected, it will only save the blue one. So make sure that you're double checking that every swatch that you want to save is highlighted before you do this.